uh, ventured outside today for, for this video. Um, wanted to go through some ML secure and steep ground type stuff really with the rope. Um, I'll try and keep this one shorter than yesterday's one. Uh, and, you know, break it into a couple of parts. I'll probably do another video on like app sounds and stuff at some point. Um, we're outside, so the dog is currently sniffing the camera. Hey, hello. Uh, and so you'll get a few interruptions from him. You'll hear the odd sheep uh, and a few cars going past and stuff in the dirt. So it's quite, it's too nice to be indoors today. Um, okay, so in the ML scheme, we we have the security on steep ground element. Uh, and for the most part, we, we very much uh, work towards avoiding the use of a rope uh, through good group management, good uh, route choice, a bit of knowledge of where we're, we're going, um, and some quality decision making sort of based on what we see. Uh, but we, we do have to be able to um, do stuff um, more on the emergency side as well. So the ML syllabus talks about uh, protecting people up or down, probably more likely to be down realistically, but up or down, um, sort of short, scrambly uh, bits of terrain. So I look at that sort of short, rocky steps. Sometimes that's going to be with a rope, okay? Uh, so we're going to look at um, direct belays and indirect belays. Uh, but first off, just want to chat about the rope briefly. Uh, this one's like a nine millimeter rope. Uh, it's probably about bang on, to be honest. There's pros and cons of, of skinny ropes, fat ropes, 10 millimeters. Yeah, great, really nice to handle in terms of gripping it. Um, you just find it a bit easier, especially considering a lot of this stuff is gonna be uh, you know, in the cold and, and the wet because things don't tend to go wrong on those nice, sunny, happy days. It'll probably be when something um, not so good is uh, occurring. So 10 mil, yeah, great, solid, confidence inspiring. Uh, but it's heavy, isn't it? And you know, for the vast majority of your days out, the rope's going to be just in the bottom of your rucksack, getting lugged around. So pretty heavy. Other end of the scale, something like eight millimeters, nice and light, harder to grip for sure. So uh, you know, gloves are a good idea for any rope work, but especially if you're using super skinny ropes. Um, nice and light though, so that you know that's a plus. Probably the sort of nine millimeter kind of. Thickness is just a nice compromise, I guess, really. So that's kind of what I recommend. Uh, and I suggest people kind of have it in a small dry bag, sort of flaked in uh, to that, so it's kind of ready to go, rather than coiled up like a climb would carry there, as we want it sort of ready to go and that. So into a dry bag uh, with just the tail sticking out of that bag, so it's quick and easy to get to. Um, and lengthwise, probably 30 meters is what most people would recommend going shorter than that you, you run out of rope quite quickly especially not for this video but looking at abseiling you've doubled that up your anchor's probably a, a bit further back from the edge and stuff so you don't get much to play with really so 30 meters a nice compromise more than that you just don't really need it for these short rocky steps that we're talking about um yeah you, you can buy loads of different ropes uh, online just you know, google confidence ropes and you'll, you'll find some but they tend to be on the skinny side so just look for a nine millimeter ish climbing rope personally okay uh so we're not planning to use the rope that that's key as an ml um, but we need to have those skills uh should we need them we kind of look at it in the sense of it's an emergency rope work but also uh, is to prevent things getting worse. So it might be that, uh, yeah, just for an example, whether this is realistic, I don't know, but you know, the minibus is 15 minutes away, but there's that short rocky step that maybe it normally is okay, but uh, maybe it's just like loads wetter than you're expecting or, or something like that. So the choice is like either go down there and, and get the rope out or like this massive detour where you're risking hypothermia for your group and stuff like that. Well, I'd go down the short rocky step, assuming we can manage it with the rope. Uh, so it's that kind of thinking as well, right? We want to keep things uh, like as simple as, as we can. You know, this rope is going to be in the bottom of that rucksack for day after day after day. And we need to be able to remember the bits of rope work uh, when we need them at some random point in the future. So we're going to do everything with uh, your hands. I saw, how do I? Hey, oh, oh. Guess the points, like I said. So an overhand, uh, we really can do everything with an overhand. It really is the most simple knot that there is. Okay, you can do everything with that knot. 
for something you're going to want to do um, no hand on the bike okay great well dress it nicely a knot neat knot is not a knot at all so get it dressed neatly um, simple okay we don't do stoppers as ML people we just have decent length tails uh, you know that's a bit too long but like a, a good hand sized um, or a touch bigger is, is fine if you're tying it around something you just don't want it getting stood on you said it's dangling at knee length or past that you're probably going to have a bit of a you know people just get tangled up with it really so you can you can literally do everything with that be it tying your group into the rope you know one at a time not, not all of them at once or tying that hand and anchor the only other method that I do is, I don't even know what it's called, but it, it's really useful. It's something it's pretty similar. It starts with uh, an overhand. It's easier when you, if you don't do it, if you haven't done it before, practice it on, on yourself. Uh, and then we tie in a, a stopper knot around both strands. Okay. And you want that tail to be a bit longer than I put it there probably, uh, we're just about okay, as long as it's like, like I say, a grabbable size, we're okay on that one, that's about, about good actually, uh, there's a pull one side, like that, you can see how the original overhand is coming into view now, and as I pull that, it goes properly tight on that, uh, so it's really snug on me, I've had a, a good estimate there, um, it's really easy to adjust so if you've got you might you've probably got like six people to get up or down this short rocky step so you can just roll that overhand back or forwards a bit uh, and they can as well you know it's not not a difficult thing to do even for someone who hasn't done sort of knots and things before i do oh wait i do use an overhand rather than a figure of eight because it's just quicker to roll one way or the other um it says it's much quicker to adjust so that's what you end up with, okay? Pretty skinny, <laughs> apparently. Uh, you know, other knots will do. You can, you can literally just tie what we said uh, a minute ago, that uh, overhand on the bike. You know, it still works, doesn't it? All right. I pre-estimate my size, okay? And then I put that one over my head. And I just adjust that back or forth. So it's great, simple. It's really hard to forget an overhand, keep that tail a bit shorter than what I've got there. Uh, you just adjust it for each person. So it's a bit more faffy to adjust, um, but it's, you know, it's not desperate by any means. So the adjustable one, really good. I'd probably do a video on confidence roping at some point because I've got plenty of time here. Um, I don't use that slippery method for confidence roping because sometimes you want to actually grab the loop. So I do want this kind of fixed method for that. There's loads of other knots you can do, uh, and from an assessment point of view, if you do them, then that's fine. As long as they're safe and they work, yeah, we're happy. So some people use a bowling, great, bowling's got to have a stopper on it, don't forget that. Um, but as long as, if you can just remember an overhand, you can do everything in the ML syllabus, right? Um, probably all I want to say on that, but I'm sure some other bits will come up in a minute. But uh, the sort of the next part is, so we know how to fix someone into the rope uh, to get them up or down our, our short rocky step and the only reason I say it's usually down is because you know we're kind of we're sort of running away sort of thing we don't we tend to be you know get down as quick as possible uh, safely if we're going up and it, it, maybe that's getting us further into trouble but there's going to be exceptions of course could well be a little bit of up to get us to a, a, an easier down is the right thing to do so it could be either way once we found our, our short rocky step, you know, don't forget out the group, get them kitted up in some warm kit in the group shelter, having a hot drink, chilling out, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not going to dwell too much on those bits, but you know, the groups, like, don't forget about them while you're doing whatever you're doing. Don't want them to get any worse, right? Uh, so I need, I need to find a good anchor that's going to be um, just unquestionably good, all right? Uh, I am currently sat on the anchor and I'm going to move it in a minute. We don't want to be able to move the anchors that we're talking about in, in, um, for, for this stuff. Ideally, it wants to be like part of the mountain, part of the bedrock, but you know, that's not always the case. It just needs to be of a size that 
that cannot possibly move. We're gonna test it, we're gonna look at it first to judge it. Yeah, hit it with our hands, keeping another hand to feel for any vibrations and, and watching the edge of the rock against other rocks or grass and stuff to see if there's any movement. If it kind of passes that test, I try and keep a hand on it and, and kick it, like kick it properly hard. Be careful of your group though, if it is going to move, you don't want it to tumble down onto them, so keep that in mind. Uh, and think about yourself as well when you're kicking this rock near an edge, if it does go, are you going to go? So, you know, you're pretty important in this situation as well. So do it all super safely. Um, once you've found the anchor and it is all solid and everything, you'll have already, already looked at it to, to think it's the right shape and stuff. So we want our rope to stay on it, obviously. You can't have it lifting off. So um, we talk about one thing called the saw test. So I'm gonna use this, this chair anchor now. Uh, this is especially for Andy say to be on my knees for a second. Um, I'm gonna put my rope on it and I'm just gonna saw it back and forth. Uh, it works, you can see on the chair, it, it sits there, it doesn't lift off. If it was sloping the other way, when you do the saw test, it works its way up and, and could come off, and that's obviously a no. Um, so you have to find another anchor. We need to check for sharp edges, we need to check the rope's not going to get stuck in it, all that kind of stuff as well. Remember, it could be a, it could be a tree, yeah? Um, just don't get that opportunity so much on, in the mountains, but it could be. Same rules apply. Make sure it's solid enough um, and all that stuff. Uh, and once it's passed those tests, we we can start to move on. But from an assessment point of view, you know, check and double check your anchors because yeah, your assessor will. You know, I, I've literally sometimes I've come up to blocks on assessment. I've been able to pick them up and move them. You don't be that person. But moving past assessment, if you're doing this for real, you know, and you've got someone's loved one on the end of that rope then you know this is pretty key isn't it to, to have an absolute quality anchor all right um so yeah just check and uh, check and double check um okay so we've found our anchor we could just direct belay off it which is kind of what i just did with that saw test um it's chucking the rope over it tying little johnny into the end of it i'll just tie the, the fixed one for now just to simulate where that would be you know, get it dressed nicely because we should um we're going to get them into that while they're in a nice safe spot so they're stood on a, you know a well back from the edge on a nice flat area as flat as mountains are and get them into the rope that way i guess ideally putting it over their head stops them sort of wobbling around but even if they fell over they're nowhere near an edge so you know not too stressed about that and then you can put the you can find your anchor which is going to be this chair and you know very simply you put your rope over it to move it back a bit you put your rope over it little johnny's there uh and it's a bit difficult without actually anyone on it um but as as they kind of scramble downwards under their own power we're not lowering or anything right um you know some years ago that used to be a thing in, in the mo we would lower people down uh stuff now we're protecting them down that short rocky step under their own power so we're there as a backup but we're not we're not full on lowering so kind of let them take the rope from you you don't want any slack in it because then that fall or that slip turns into a fall uh, so keep it nice and snug and as they walk backwards you literally just feed it through keep both hands on the braking strand there's no point in not having both we don't need the other one to do anything else so both hands on that feed it through down they go okay when you get to the bottom, they can lift that off, you pull it back up, you fire the next person down, keeping them well back from the edge and thinking, you know, now we've got two lots of people to manage, so where are they stood, the person down there? Get them out of the way in case any bits of rock get dislodged or anything like that, so get them sheltered down for a minute because the best way in the world is gonna take some time even if you're really slick at it. Um, so they're fired down, next person, next person, next person. If you were going up, which like I say you could be, it's just the opposite, isn't it? You've throw that rope down you might have to go down yourself to fit this to them hopefully they can manage to get that on you might have a um, one that's uh, you know more adept at this kind of thing than the others so maybe they can be in control of that but either way uh, and then you're going to bring them up so this time don't tend to need to pull up on one uh, and pull down the other I just tend to hoof it through like this oh, yeah, shuffling would be best then we've got both hands on the rope haven't we um, when they come up make sure you get them well back off the edge so this is something i see quite often on assessments is they do all the uh, you know the main bulk of it the, the uh, 
candy that's do the main bulk of it well but then they'll take the person off when they're when they're still right on the edge and, and you know that's no good is it they're, they're not safe until they're right back away from the edge um this is a great method direct d-lane it's quick the, you know the bit that takes the longest is sort of finding the anchor and stuff like that in the first place but once you've found it and checked it sharp edges are, are critical to avoid on this because the rope is moving um you could pad them out and stuff but you know yeah, try and avoid them as our pinch points because the rope's moving again it can get dragged into those bits so you can wedge stuff in like a bit of rock or your rucksack or, or whatever um the the big downside though is uh you know if me as the leader in this case i'm not safe so i've got to be really confident that, that i'm secure and on a nice stable platform next to the next to the edge because you're going to be next to an edge aren't you so just make sure you're really solid so that's uh that's direct dealing quick but not super good for me necessarily all right so the next method is going to be indirect dealing um which is kind of the most complicated thing that we do as an ml in terms of the rope work stuff but thankfully it's not that uh, not that bad i've uh, moved my anchor back um just to give us a bit more space so i, I found my, my block i've decided it's part of the mountain it's not going anywhere uh, i need to get my rope round it i'm going to kind of estimate the size uh, do the overhand keep it neat i've really done my, my saw test and all that kind of thing my rope over it uh, and it's going to be slightly different this time in that I'm going to be fixed into the rope as well so I've got overhand at that end uh, and then I'm going to have an overhand for me and I'm going to purposefully leave this bit a bit slack and that's an overhand for me bring it this nice and snug Just it like that. I'm going to position myself sort of on the edge, and you know, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to brace myself against some other bits of rock as well, or dig my heels in. This is one of the reasons we often wear nice stiff boots, so we can kick them into the turf as well. At the moment, this is no good because uh, when I'm doing some body dealing, what's actually going to happen if my client falls off is I get dragged as well, and you know, bad things happen. So I've left it slack on purpose it's a bit easier to adjust so I shuffle back get the knot round the back as well I'm not going to do it quite as tight as I would like to for real life because it's going to move I tie myself an overhand in there I want that loop to be hand sized or bigger when I've finished with it just so it doesn't pop through at all uh, and then I'm going to shuffle back to where I was and that's all going to go bar tight now you don't need that little um, sort of adjustment not in the middle I just find it's easier to adjust otherwise to get it super tight and I'm talking like guitar string tight that's what we're after uh, to do it otherwise you just have to do a bit of faffing on this knot I just find it easier to purposely have slack in it and take that slack into that adjustment knot okay um, the, the next so now I'm safe I'm on I'm on the edge I'm in my braced position uh, I can actually do something useful with that, what I need to do, and this will take a minute because actually this rope's a, a 50 because it's what I just grabbed off the floor from yesterday's little video. I'm going to flake it out, make sure there's no knots in it. I mean, get, we are checking for damage as well, but hopefully you've, you've checked that prior to putting it in your bag. If you, if you don't do this, you can guarantee you'll get a, a tangle or a knot, find it wrapped around a rock or something. Um, so it's it's time well spent and obviously it won't take you quite as long because you want a 50. Um, I'm putting this on the side away from where my clients will be coming down to me. Last thing we need on, on sort of slippy terrain in the wet and all that is, is them slipping over the rope. They're already pretty nervous at this point you should imagine because you've got the rope out um, and they thought they were just going for a nice stroll. So. You know, keep them as happy as possible. Uh, so I finally got the end of that of the mission. I can do my slippery method, which if you remember, was an overhand and leave it loose because it's going to need adjusting in a minute. And then a stopper. Okay, so that's two wraps working back towards yourself and 
hope the end are right. Uh, I'm pretty sure no one's going to be that skinny, but you never know. So you can get it like ballpark right, like so, and then they can adjust that. You'd, you'd have to go and give them a demo of how to do it and all that kind of thing. Um, uh, so, so yeah, it saves you getting up and down all the time. You've got to check it though. Every time they come over to you, make sure you're flipping checking that because they might have got it wrong. And you can just then um, fling it up to them. So I'm just going to shove this behind me for the sake of this. Fling that over to them. Jobs are good. And I should have flaked it that side. Uh, just for the video, it kind of makes it a bit easier to have it there. But, but I'd have it, as I said, away from where they're coming to me. All right. Um, not so right around the back. So just a quick double check before I do anything now. Keep myself braced. Throw it to, to my first person coming down. And then I'm going to flick this over my head. All right. Tell you what, I am going to do this properly. I'm going to throw that over. Otherwise, it just, you know, it's winding me up that I wasn't doing it properly. OK, so that's my person over there. I'm going to flick that over my head. Now, you want to have your rucksack on for this, because otherwise it's going to be, uh, if they do come off, it's going to be completely in your ribs and kidneys and stuff. So get yourself, um, get your rucksack out for it, basically. Put it all over the rucksack. And if you have got sticks on your rucksack, it might be worth chucking them to the side. Otherwise, when you try to throw it over, it's going to get stuck on, on the sticks every time, make it um, just a bit more of a faff. So you'll end up, right, with little Johnny's in his like safe spot. We're gonna put the rope down there just for simulating it. This is the breaking side of the rope. You're gonna put a wrap around your arm. It's gotta be this one, not that one, okay? That that would just be painful and cause you to perhaps let go or, or worse, um, like, yeah, hurt yourself. So a wrap around your arm in the breaking strand of the rope. So he gets excited when I'm on the floor. Um, then again, it's, it's a bit tricky to do this uh, with no weight on the end, but I uh, see so we're protecting them down the rocky step. I just put both hands on this and, and feed it through as they go. If they were to slip, I just bang it across my body like that to get maximum friction. Okay, um, let them take the rope off you, remember, so it's not going, uh, you know, there's no slack in the system. I just keep feeding it through. Don't really see any point holding on to that one, both hands onto that one. Remember, they could be coming up to you. So again, what I actually find is you can, there's a couple of ways of doing this. And what I actually find is the easiest way is just to take in like this, because there's not loads of friction and stuff. So just keep taking it in really tight and then you're never letting go of that. Again, if they fall off, poof, right across yourself. Um, you'll, you'll see, I'll just put a bit of slack through here. Uh, you'll see in the um, you know, other videos and stuff this way of doing it, and this is this is grand. Uh, if you if you find there's too much friction, do it this way. As you're taking in each time, the hands are never coming off the rope. I'm resetting again. If they fall off, like that, I'll just do that one. This is it. people struggle with that a little bit when they're not used to it. Fling that over. There. Uh, so each time. We take in a bit, this hand up to there, does that, slides through, slides through. What people end up doing sometimes is as they're taking in, kind of grab underneath or something and then find they have to let go and then you've got one hand, I've only really got a couple of fingers on that breaking strand of the rope. So we want to avoid that and push that up there each time and then grab, reset and away you go. You get really slick at doing it once you've done it a bit, but um, practice it. Practice it both uh, left and right handed as well, because you know it could be there's a bit of rock or they're coming from this way, that way. So you've got to be able to do it both hands, really. So yeah, make, make sure you're well practiced at that. Um, and again, just look after that that group. Think about where they're going and all that kind of thing. Once you've got them all down, you know, it's, remember it's taking some time, so make sure they're all staying warm and all that. Um, you have to get yourself down. You might be confident scrambling down, uh, you know, what you protected them down. And, and that's cool if, if you um, if you are genuinely, you hear the sheep as well now. If you are, you are happy with it and you're happy you're safe, you, you know, good, crack on. Um, if you feel that you, uh, you're a bit sketchy on it, 
then we're gonna probably abseil ourselves down. That's the normal way of protecting ourselves down the road. I'll do that in another video, a couple of methods, classic and uh, South African, kind of avoid angel wings. Uh, it's, it's a bit spicy for me, not much friction, um, but we'll cover that in, in another video. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I, I wanted to add to that one before it ticks over like the longest video on YouTube. Um, so nine mil rope, 30 meters in a dry bag, do everything with an overhand, you know other knots cool, do other knots, but overhand works just fine. Keep your group safe, test those anchors to absolute destruction because your assessor will. Um, if, yeah, they, they just will. Uh, but more importantly, you know, when you're doing it for real, that's people's uh, pride and joy in the end of that rope. So we need to be flipping uh, super confident. Climbers amongst you will be used to using two anchors nearly all the time. Um, but in, in an AML sense, we don't. And for that reason, we don't get any stability from a second anchor. You know, one anchor means we have to think about anchor, that, that rock, B layer, that's me climber that's the, the sort of scrambler in this case we want it in a nice straight line a b c a nice straight line if one of those things is off to the side if and when the the scrambler sort of falls off one thing's going to move basically so it might be me sliding and do i still hold on to the rope well hopefully i do but do i bang it on the rock or let go who knows and it puts slack in the system or is it anchor b layer or cool but the the scrambler they come off to the side and take a bit of a swing and hurt themselves remember we haven't got helmets and stuff for this because it's emergency we're not setting out uh, planning to use the rope this is like a you know a bit of a, a last resort kind of thing so abc anchor b layer climb all in a straight line as well as left and right that's like up and down so i find normally in an ml sense uh, i'm butt on the floor heels digged in uh, I can't think of many uh, situations where I'm, I'm stood up. You'd have to have really high anchors. Uh, it just doesn't happen so much in, in an ML situation. So by default, just sit your butt down, suck it up and you might get wet uh, and, and get them down. Um, anything else? Uh, only that some people take a sling and a crab with them. It's just not in the, the sort of scope of the ML scheme. Uh, so we don't cover that on, on training courses, uh, rope only. Um, and you can just practice this anyway. Yeah, it's great if you can practice on some rocky terrain and at some point make sure you do. But, you know, you can do it on a, on a banister, on a chair, off a tree in your garden, anything really, just use your imagination. Um, and, you know, just coming back to this one because my, my brain is just flitting back and forth. Uh, advantages of the direct we said it was it was quick to do but you as the leader aren't safe with this one uh, like it takes a fraction longer because we've got a knot around the anchor we've got a knot around me and then we've got that kind of uh, adjustment knot as well so it takes a bit longer but I'm fully attached to everything so I'm like super safe now uh, so that could be good um, if you're on that sort of slippery slippery rock on, on the edge and all that kind of thing um, so yeah, I think that's that's most of what I wanted to say. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching, but do fire away with any any questions or anything. Um, we'll probably do another video tomorrow, maybe a climbing type one. Um, but I will come back and do the the sort of protecting yourself down the steps, the the classic abseil, the South African abseil. Okay, thanks for watching.